So if you don't like running, pick up some weights because what's been found, just 10 weeks of strength training increased the level of factors that grow new brain cells, new nerves. And we use that as a way of indicating the youthfulness of the brain and regrowth of new nerve cells. Welcome to an enlightening journey with Dr. David Sinclair, a leading expert in genetics and anti-aging. We're about to uncover his latest insights on how lifestyle choices impact our longevity and what we can do to live healthier, longer lives. I was also shocked to read that it's not just the brain that ages if you don't sleep. We already know that if you restrict rats from sleep, they get diabetes within two weeks. In humans, looking at a million people, this study from 2010, Capucho et al., what they found was that in people that had very little sleep, the risk of dying was 30% higher than those that got a natural, normal night's sleep. And the thing is, our brains are getting so much adversity right now, right? We talk about a little bit of adversity being good, but we evolved to have a pretty low, constant low level of adversity popping up now and then. And right now in terms of sort of like the insults and injuries that we're taking in, in terms of stresses, daily stresses, everything changing, our brains are being besieged all the time. We need sleep to reset. It's just too much. There's too much to remember. There's too much to cope with, too much anxiety. We just are living through a pandemic. This is really stressful times. And just lack of sleep makes it worse. You might want to do it, not just because you feel better, but you will think better too. It's hard to uh, take people who have Alzheimer's, Parkinson's disease, other cognitive uh, problems through things like that, because it's just at, at a certain point, you lose the ability to get them to respond to you. There's a study this year uh, out of Brazil that showed the exercise had a really significant effect on mouse models of Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. What you're saying and what's in the literature is that diseases of aging, and also including Parkinson's, which is age-related, are benefited as well. So if you don't like running, pick up some weights because what's been found in this study, this is 2013, Pereira and colleagues found that in an elderly cohort, they had 451 people, just 10 weeks of strength training increased the level of factors that grow new brain cells, new nerves. And we use that as a way of indicating the youthfulness of the brain and regrowth of new nerve cells. And the takeaway here is that at a time in many people's lives when they're becoming less active, it's actually more important than ever before to become more active and to stay active. Before it's too late, uh, it's very hard uh, to get a very elderly grandparent or parent to get on a treadmill or lift weights. So what we want to do for ourselves and for our parents and grandparents is to get them moving early on before it's too late. Even if we're eating well, even if we're exercising, I mean, presumably our ancestors did these things too. If they hadn't, we wouldn't be here. Um, they faced these sorts of adversities all throughout their lives. And that's what we're trying to mimic through our diets and our exercise. So far, we've gained valuable insights from Dr. Sinclair on enhancing our health through practical lifestyle changes. Coming up next, He'll take us deeper into the world of advanced genetic research and the exciting future of anti-aging therapies. It makes the enzyme, it's like a Pac-Man and it's controlling genes and it works faster. So resveratrol from red wine has clearly been shown to be beneficial and also prevents cancer and not just has metabolic and brain enhancing effects. The other component of Mediterranean diet that works on CERT1 is olive oil. Um, and Doug Masinek recently showed that if you add oleic acid, which is a major component of olive oil, it's also found in avocados and other good foods like that, can also directly activate the enzyme by sticking to it and making this Pac-Man, I don't know if everyone knows what a Pac-Man is, this little <laughs> puppet creature on an electronic game, uh, chomp faster. Um, and there's probably other molecules. That's sort of the overarching nature of a plant-based diet, whether it's Mediterranean diet or some other diet, is that it is mimicking adversity. Your body's got to work a little harder to get everything that it needs. That's sending the signals that maybe times aren't so great and we need to activate these longevity pathways. Well, that that's the difference between a Mediterranean diet and a high-fat carnivorous diet and a typical Western diet. They're full with calories, full with whole bunch of stuff that tells the body times are good it's a bounty no need to protect ourselves let's just burn the candle at both ends and forget about life later and that's not what you want what you want to do is to have the perception of adversity and the mediterranean diet as well as in japan that what's called the okinawan diet which has low levels of uh, protein and mostly plant-based those two trick the body into thinking that the food supply sucks and could run out any minute 
And and these guys aren't perfect, right? Let's talk about some of the things that you need to make sure that you're getting enough of if you are eating this plant-based diet. Called SARM-1, and it depletes the cell rapidly of NAD. So what you've got is a decrease in the production of NAD, also with an increase in the degradation of NAD. So supplementation, we think, is important to not just get the youthful levels back, but go beyond that to mimic exercise and mimicking a perfect perfect diet, especially for the elderly who cannot always do those things. And we've got a long history now of research going back almost 20 years of NAD supplementation on brain health. There was a study in 2004 that showed treatment with NADH slowed Alzheimer's. And a lot of people hear about NAD+. Plus. NADH might be a little unfamiliar. NADH is basically NAD with a hydrogen atom attached to it. NAD plus has a positive charge like the end of a battery. And then if you stick the hydrogen on to the vitamin B3 part of the NAD, then that's going to be called NADH. And that's important in the cell because that's the other major function of NAD. One is to turn on the sirtuins and DNA repair and all that good stuff. But it also is known as a hydrogen carrier molecule that takes hydrogens and moves it from one place to another. So why would NADH work if NAD plus is what, what's th the standard? Well, what, what I think is going on here is that, so NAD activates sirtuins in a test tube and in the cell. NADH actually has the opposite effect. So you don't want high levels. So what's probably happening is that NADH gets into the bloodstream, gets degraded into its various components, vitamin B3, there's a phosphate, there's a part of DNA called an, a nucleotide, the A letter and they get reassembled back into NAD+. You're just giving the components in a concentrated form by taking NADH. Another more recent result, uh, a combination of NR, which is another kind of NAD booster that we talked about a few episodes back, and uh, terostilbene slowed down the progression of ALS. So NR is different from NMN. Let, let's go through that again. When you want to make NAD, what the cell does is it takes vitamin B3 or niacin or nicotinamide, turns it into NR. So the nicotinamide gets now a sugar, ribose. And then to make NMN, it puts a phosphate, which is phosphorus and oxygen. And then it combines that together to form NAD. So those are the various steps. Now what NR is, it's a couple of steps back from NAD. And so when you take NR, it'll, it's made into NMN, made into NAD. But you can, it's been shown in humans by taking large doses, about a gram, of NR, you'll make NMN, you'll make higher levels of NAD, which is shown to be important in this study in ALS patients. Those ALS patients actually benefited greatly from this supplementation. The other component I forgot to mention is terastilbene, and the terastilbene part of it is resveratrol. It's, it's resveratrol with three methyl chemicals on it. It's essentially a way of delivering in a pill form resveratrol plus an NAD booster. As we conclude, Dr. David Sinclair leaves us with transformative thoughts on aging. His research not only highlights the importance of our daily choices, but also opens doors to promising scientific breakthroughs in the quest for a longer, healthier life. <laughs>